Coming up on this episode of Design to the Nines, I'm going to tell you seven cost-saving tips on how to decorate like Pottery Barn on a budget. If that sounds good to you, stay tuned. Welcome to Design to the Nines. I'm Natalie Callahan, and if this is the first time we're meeting and you enjoy home decor and DIY videos, then I'd ask you to consider subscribing to my channel below and turning the notifications on because I bring you weekly videos on these topics. Oh, Pottery Barn, how do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I don't know about you, but Every time I get a Pottery Barn catalog in the mail, it is like Christmas morning. I just love it. It's filled with beautiful ideas and inspirations. I think the reason that most people really have a love affair for Pottery Barn is because it is classic. It's timeless. You know that if you buy something from Pottery Barn, 10 years down the road, it's still gonna be in style. It's still gonna be classic. And it also has this very inviting and comfortable feel. Having said that, I know that Pottery Barn can be out of a lot of people's budgets. So what I'm doing today is I've compiled my seven tips on how to decorate like Pottery Barn on a budget. I've got some great cost saving tips for you that are gonna help you get that classic comfortable, wonderful Pottery Barn look that we see in the magazines. You don't need to take notes. I compiled a printable and stay with me to the very end and I will tell you where to get this printable with all of my cost saving tips. All right, tip number one. When you think of Pottery Barn, you need to think clean yet comfortable. Now, <laughs> <laughs> my house is not 100% clean all the time. I have kids, I have a family, we're busy. And I got the best piece of advice a long time ago. That somebody said to me, if your house always looks like a picture out of Pottery Barn magazine, then there a happy family does not reside. But one thing that is true with Pottery Barn is it has a very comfortable and relaxed feel. You feel like you can cozy up with a blanket and a book and just, and just feel so comfortable. And that is definitely something that you want to strive for, is a home that is clean, yet very inviting and very welcoming to your guests, to your family, to your friends, and free of like cluttered corners and stuff. I am super guilty of this at times. Definitely, I need like Marie Kondo. Marie. I can't remember her name. Let me know in the comment section if you know who I'm talking about. You know you know who I'm talking about. I need her to come to my house and help me out. Okay, point number two, texturize. Texture adds so much interest, adds so much dimension, and it really adds to that um, inviting, comfortable feel. Pottery Barn does this with baskets. They do it with glass and metal and florals and throws and pillows. If you've got something smooth, you want something a little bit more rough with a little bit more texture, you can do this with patterns. So play around. I've got some really good videos on how to select fabrics for your houses. I'll put the link up there as well below. So to save money on textures, shop places like Marshalls, TJ Maxx and Home Goods, and, and Target you can really beef up your texture without spending a lot of money on that. Which brings me to my third point, neutralize. Pottery Barn is infamous for having really neutral and muted tones. Um, they do little pops of color here and there, but they definitely have muted tones, muted palettes, especially in their large scale pieces. So if you're shopping somewhere other than Pottery Barn, you're gonna wanna make sure you buy solid colored large scale items in like whites and creams and taupes and beiges, muted tones. You know, of course they bring in their le leather club chairs. They have some leather sofas and things like that. So keep that in mind if you're shopping um, some discount places. Any punches of color should come by way of accessories, including like pillows and artwork and florals and things like that. So they have neutral walls. Here are a couple of my favorite 
Pottery Barn paint colors. I will also put the names in the description below. These ones are fantastic, but the Pottery Barn paint palette is very limited and they put a lot of time, energy, and effort into picking very tasteful colors that you can almost not mess up. So I highly suggest that when trying to pull off that Pottery Barn look is to pick paint colors, take them to your local home improvement store. So what I really love about Pottery Barn's um, catalog is when you go through and you're looking at these pictures, you can find really interesting objects and items, um, including like some really cool looking pottery and some really cool accessories, which brings me to my next point. What they are really known for is their very unique and interesting accessories. Most of their accessories will really trigger a conversation, make a statement. And one way I like to save money on accessories that kind of have that pottery barn vibe is hitting up flea markets hitting up thrift stores hitting up antique stores and really finding cool pieces with a lot of meaning also you want to bring the outdoors in by way of flowers and greenery botanicals and really they bring a lot of natural elements in also when you're accessorizing you really want to try to do it in groups of three if you can threes or fives odd numbers you want to make sure you have gallery walls with family photos maybe that are all kind of in an antique finish and cohesive let me know in the comment section below if you'd be interested in me doing a gallery wall that's in the pottery barn style that's not tacky that's not cheesy that's a little bit more tasteful and this brings me to my next point number five go big or go home less is more and bigger is better you walk into a pottery barn store and you see huge lanterns huge pieces they're oversized they're big they make a statement oversized mirrors oversized furniture oversized accessories these are all pinnacle looks for pottery barn and Honestly, I kind of I really like that and I'm trying to do that a little bit more instead of having lots of little things, just having like wow factor on fewer things. So keep that in mind. Now this would not be a design to the nines tutorial if I didn't talk about my sixth point, knock it off. Now I have a whole host of knockoff videos and I've knocked off ton of Pottery Barn items at Valor Designs, William Sonoma, and you can be assured that there will be more to come. What I think is really important when um, doing a knockoff though, and you'll notice that my knockoffs are not always like the cheapest. You could probably go out there and find some less expensive Pottery Barn um, knockoffs. I always try to do my knockoffs as inexpensively as I possibly can while still maintaining a level of quality because when it comes to Pottery Barn there is a feeling of quality um, it's nice so knock off some of the accessories I've got a ton of tutorials and I will link them up here as well as putting them in the description box below my last tutorial I it's not a pottery barn item it was a Ballard design item but I used tuna cans I mean but you would never know so you get creative think outside the box while still making sure that it's something that you're gonna want to have around for a while that if you're gonna invest the amount of time and money into it I'd rather spend a little bit more and have something that's gonna stand the test of time rather than doing something really cheaply that it's just gonna end up in the trash so that's my suggestion when it comes to knocking off accessories. Because Pottery Barn is such a timeless, classic look, and because everybody wants to be like them, there are some knockoff furniture out there. In fact, in my home in Maine, we have a couple of sofas that really look like a Pottery Barn item. Uh, they aren't I got them on I got them secondhand on Facebook marketplace I think I spent $100 on the couch and $50 in the love seat I gave it a fresh look by um, dyeing the slip covers slip covers are really common with pottery barn all in all I had like 
$200 into both the sofa and the love seat and they look a lot like something that you would pick up from Pottery Barn. And then of course Ikea has their um, Ektorp sofa. And a lot of times you can just get straight up lucky and find an actual Pottery Barn item on like the marketplace or Craigslist or someplace like that. So just look around, see what you can find. And this brings me to my last point, point number seven, sometimes original is the best. So yes, even I actually buy Pottery Barn items. And here's a couple of ways you can save money. You want to watch for things to go on sale. You check their clearance section. Today, I went on my field trip to Pottery Barn and they had a floor sample sale. They were all in really good condition and you could find a lot of really good deals. That would be like buying something at a discount furniture store, but you could get the actual original. They offer a lot of coupons online and they're always constantly running sales. So sometimes just fork over the dough. <laughs> I'm a little partial to their Luciana medallion duvet cover. I've had it in my main home. I, I purchased it in a different color for my home here. I'm not going to show you that today because that's going to be coming up in future episodes very soon. I'm going to be working on my master bedrooms. But yeah, there's ways to save money. I, I You can score really amazing deals. You just got to keep your eyes open. Sometimes forking over the extra dough is worth it because it's going to last you longer. It's going to be quality. It's something that you really love. So why not treat yourself? And then just try to find coupons, try to find sales, save money that way and treat yourself to an actual genuine, authentic Pottery Barn that you just love. I've purchased it in the past and I'll continue to purchase it in the future. I'll probably never buy like a floral arrangement or anything like that from there just because I know that I can make something almost identical for so much less. So you kind of just have to pick and choose and decide what pieces you're willing to spend money on, what pieces you think that you can get a similar look for less and when you're all done what's most important is that your home speaks to you you have to live in it it's your home all right so that's it for these tips this time but you're gonna want to stay tuned because i've got a whole bunch of projects coming up and a lot of them will continue to be knockoffs of pottery barn imitation they say is the best form of flattery right <laughs> And so we'll continue to do great knockoffs. All right, now as promised, the printable for this, I'm gonna provide the link below in the description box. It just goes kind of over the ideas that we talked about. Um, if you have any questions or you want me to make a specific tutorial on a Pottery Barn item or another topic, let me know in the comment section below. I'm always looking for great ideas for videos for you. Thank you so much for watching. Here's a video that I think you'll like and one that YouTube suggests, so make sure you check those out. And hopefully, I'll see you again next week. So see you soon.